it increases education, and it decreases the amount of welfare that taxpayers have to end up paying for because teenage moms and parent, teenage parents aren't on these kinds of programs where they need support because they're getting the proper education they need to know how to avoid unwanted pregnancies at an early age. Um, it, provide, it decreases the total cost of healthcare. If there's less STIs occurring, then there's not as much need for healthcare. Um, it provides a better and stress-free sexual experience for the students because in these absence-only programs, they're taking this pledge and they're breaking this pledge when they have their first thing. And they're filled with all kinds of shame and they're sinful and, and they're just very ashamed of everything that happened. And they feel bad and it's not a good thing. Because sex is supposed to be a fun thing. Um, and it makes for a better life overall. Um, the last graph on the PowerPoint, or on my handout, is um, in 2015, the number of cases of gonorrhea and chlamydia in the United States. In 20, 2015, there were 400,000 cases of gonorrhea and 1.5 million cases of chlamydia. Um, and in both of these cases, people aged between 15 and 24 accounted for 50% of gonorrhea and about 65% of chlamydia. So they're disproportionately affected because they're not getting the proper education that they need to get. Um, I have some examples and stories that I wrote about in the paper. Um, so Beth Liba is a feminist writer. She wrote about her experiences with abstinence-only education because she attended only Christian school through kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, so through her education, like I've said a couple times, she had no understanding of her menstrual cycle. She didn't have any idea how to use birth control. Um, she was taught that virginity was a gift to her husband, which goes against sexual equality, because it shows that, because they, they don't talk necessarily as much about the men saving their virginity for their, their, their wives, it's more that the women have to save it for the men. It's um, a little backwards to how we kind of think now as a country. Well, I guess not. Um, <laughs> Um, she took an abstinence pledge and she wore the purity ring and that's where I got the information that 88% of people who follow that pledge and wear that purity ring fail. And she was one of them. She reported feeling um, victim blaming and slut shaming from other people who found out and she was kind of shunned out of the community that she was in because she was in these Christian schools. Um, she, write, she finishes her article with, young people should be armed with the necessary information should hormones and perfectly natural urges prevail, as they almost always do. Absence that only education just doesn't work. Another person that I have for my story that I uh, read about was Jessica Hernandez. She's a freelance writer in New York. Um, she was homeschooled K through 10, and she had a more graphic experience because she was taught by her parents. She didn't have the absence only education. Um, she says that my classroom was my kitchen, and my sexual illiteracy began at home. Um, when she asked her mom about sex, her mom took some white glue in between two pieces of red paper, got them all nice, and then ripped them apart and said, and then she said, um, and, and those pieces of paper were left in tatters and they were all red, and she said, see, bloodied, damaged, and destroyed. And that's all that she left her with. Um, other questions that Jessica had asked got left, got answered with the same kind of vague, confusing answers. And, uh, she was told that she couldn't wear tampons because it would rip her hymen and then she wouldn't be a virgin anymore. She could only use pads to deal with her menstrual cycle that she knew nothing about. Eventually she got into a high school, went to absence only education and understood nothing. So she took it upon herself to get her own research and learn everything that she needed to about her body. Students shouldn't have, being a teenager is hard enough, students shouldn't have to deal with becoming, or deal with learning about their sexuality on their own. sure that you're paying attention and being respectful. Um, a couple of things. We have five minutes for question and answer. Again, if this goes over a little bit, that's okay. So right now, you should have been forming questions. I need my paperback so I can start asking questions. 
So we start, one person asks, so we, all four of us have to ask one question, and then we can go from there. So we've got to go in order until everybody's done with their questions, basically. Um, so would anybody like to start? Because we've only got five minutes. You don't have a lot of time to respond. All right. Yes. Okay. So since there are so many organizations that support the fully comprehensive sexual education uh, program, why do you think it's so hard for the government to pass something like this? I think it's hard because, especially now, our Congress is controlled by conservatives um, who believe in this kind of education. I think it's hard because the Pew, I, did, I saw some Pew research that showed that 70% of the U.S. is still Christian. Um, I didn't know how accurate that was. It seemed a little steep. Um, and I think it's hard because of lobbying and that people don't want, people, people who argue for absence only education argue that if we teach students about fully comprehensive education, we're encouraging them to have sex and we're encouraging them to masturbate and things like that that just aren't appropriate because they don't follow the Bible. Um, and I think that's one of the bigger problems is that there's a lot of misinformation and media control. And I think that's why it's not going to be solved soon, despite all the organizations that support. Yeah. Did you? That's you. Um, let me really try that. Yeah. Um, did you specify which age group already that you specifically want for these programs for absence only should be given? Is right. it a fourteen year old or is it like a certain like wait absence like, only or comprehensive? She means comprehensive. comprehensive. Yeah. So in my um, solution section, yeah. I talk about how I think that the same program that absence only uses, where they're teaching the students at these certain ages, that the fully comprehensive sexual education should just simply replace the program and the ages stay exactly the same. So it starts in middle school around the age of 14. Okay. And maybe earlier, I know that my I went to a more progressive um, school district and it, in like in fifth grade they taught my sisters about everything that happened with their bodies and menstrual cycles like that. Nothing ever happened for guys because I ended up going to a charter school so I didn't actually get any kind of sexual education at all before college. It's interesting. Next. Um, I, this was a big red flag for me. You wrote on why we should be concerned, and you said in your paper on page five, second paragraph, the first sentence says, research shows now that young adults will engage in sexual activity regardless of sexual education, and you even have it cited. Yes, so we know that if you take students, because you can't just put everyone on the same spectrum, some students, even though they undergo and they go through different kinds of sexual education, they still are going to be sexually active regardless of the education that they learned. So this is not talking about everybody? No, it's not talking about everybody. Um, it's saying that research shows that, I didn't say how many because it didn't say how many. Okay. Um, but yeah, and so it's important, be, and the point behind that is that we know that students are going to be sexually active. Um, I forget the statistic I threw in there, I think it was 43% of high school students are sexually active before they graduate. Yeah. Um, and so it's important to teach those students fully comprehensive sexual education so that they use condoms and so it's not a 23% rate that use it compared to that for the um, absence only education. Um, you talk about the uh, funds of the absence only sexual education? Yes. Um, they're funded through the Social Security Act. Um, that's under Title V, like Section 510, Subsection B. Um, it's in my references. I cited it once. Um, absence education has its exclusive purpose teaching the social, psychological, and health gains to being realized by abstaining from sexual activity. It receives its monies only through federal, um, and well, through federal and also private donations from more ultra conservative organizations. Um, but fully comprehensive sexual education is not currently fully funded by the United States as federally. Some states choose to fully fund um, fully comprehensive sexual education. Some school districts might do it. Some counties, it, it varies, but it's not nationally recognized. In the schools that already have this like implemented, um, who is like responsible mm -hmm. of the teaching it? Is it like a, so they have? You know, that level? I don't know for sure. Um, I took a class last semester on sexual health, and from what I remember, I don't know how accurate it is. Um, they have a certified health educator teaching these courses because it's a lot of information to digest, and it needs to be accurate, and it needs to be credible. I have two more if you guys don't have any. Okay, one, you talked a lot, and I read this a lot in your paper, and you talked a lot about conservative religious groups. Yes. But I didn't see any studies or statistics or proof showing that it is actually religious groups that are 
causing the problem, basically, is what right. you're stating. So what, how can you, I, I, I agree with you, but right. I need some facts or you need to tell me some things, because if I didn't agree with you, how would you convince me of that? Right, I didn't <laughs> do a whole lot of digging into that section. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of digging into that section. The uh, a couple of the articles I read talked about how um, those laws originally got passed. It was so. Where? How did you find out that it was conservative religious groups? Through my research, I came. There's a there's a source that I cited three times in the middle of it. So it was the Sexuality Information and, and Education Council of the United States. Um, they talked a lot about the, they had a whole long article about the history okay. behind absence-only sexual education. They talked about how it started with Reagan in the 80s and then was more funded by Bush in the, 90, in the 2000s. Um, and through, and they were arguing that it was the um, conservative members of Congress who voted to fund these programs and not the liberal members of Congress. And then my last, mm -hmm. okay, so my last question is, and you say this a lot, in, in general, um, Congress being very conservative, yep. um, even Christian, because you have Christian in here a lot, mm -hmm. how do we change, you have the reasons, you have what we should do, but how do we change it? I think that we need, we can change it only by raising public awareness on the issue, by giving true facts about absence only education and true facts about fully, fully comprehensive sexual education, and by doing that, we can vote for members of Congress who are going to put we're going to Got fund it. the pop proper program. So we, so you're saying we educate the public, and then we vote people in office who are going to fund those kinds of programs. Which we're going to run on that platform, which doesn't necessarily happen yep. all the time. So, are there any other questions? It's <laughs> really my little. Mm -hmm. I try to slide. You don't get to question. I know I don't. <laughs> <laughs> questions on this? Now I would say, presenter leaves the room. How many, how much time do we get? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Yeah, Maybe bye. Okay, this is where you guys can ask me questions, but you got to listen at the same time. So come on in. Let's start with the paper. We've got to go really quick, so please make sure that you are listening to how we do this, because this is how you decide somebody's grade in here. All right, here we go. So, um, starting with the opening paragraph, we're just going to go right through this. I had yes on everything in the opening paragraph, did you? Yes. Okay, so 10 points. You have the final paper. So let, actually, let's wait to do the final paper. Let's do ours and make sure we're in consensus and then you can do it, how about that? 10, you all in agreeance? Mm -hmm. If you guys wanna follow along with us, you can grab a paper if you want. Um, overview of the problem, did you guys find a history? I didn't find any history. So I, get, I put no for history, did you have that? Where? Wasn't that right in the beginning for like a sentence? Um, yeah, this program was funded by the Adolescent Family Life Act. Uh, there, there, was about it. there was maybe a sentence or two, and yeah. that's what he restated when he gave his presentation. So, okay, so keep that in mind. I put no or very little. Deal? Mm -hmm. Why should we be concerned? Um, he talks a little bit in the beginning about funding, pregnancies, STIs, so yes? <laughs> okay. Um, extent of the problem, how bad is it? There was a lot of taxes, but it was kind of like overloading us, I felt like, at the beginning. Like, that first lot. paragraph is all just numbers, numbers to me. Like, um, cool. My other problem is, I even wrote thoughts on this next question, same with yours, background information, including both sides of the issue. He had all these quotes, but he never had any studies or proof that backed these up. He just had the problem, like a, you know, I'm trying to find one. Absence only sex, sexual educate, oh, that's his thesis. There was a few parts too that I wrote, like opinion question. Oh, a lot of opinions. Yeah. But, but I see all of these, Personal responsibility, I mean, and received over $1.5 billion since 1996 with a, with a uh, citation, but he doesn't ever elaborate or say, he's just giving scare tactics here, is what I feel like. There's not a whole lot of proof. Just like with the cotton thing, 30% of the time it doesn't work instead of 80 or 70% of the time it does. So keep that in mind. Um, cause of the problem. 
why does the problem exist? Did you guys? Funding? Yeah. It's funded. What, uh, what factor is contributing to the problem? Government funding. Um, but, but I have government funding, but he kept talking about Christians in here. Um, he talked about it a lot, but he never gave any proof. So it, yeah, it's a contributing factor, but he never says why. That's why when I asked him too, it was still very vague. There wasn't like, because this person came right out and said it, or the, do you guys get what I'm saying? So funding for abstinence. Okay, so yes, yes. Um, so, so keep that in mind, if you do this all in mind. Who is affected and how are they affected? Teens and society, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, he talks in the very last paragraph all about, he has way new information, look, I wrote all over it. Um, lower rates of pregnancy um, and STIs, poverty, lowers the cost of health care. Did he explain all of that in here? They're, they're all like inferences, but they're it, like opinions and inferences rather than like, did he explain the lower rates of pregnancy and STIs? No. If, if comprehensive sex ed worked, there was no study done in comprehensive sex ed, it was just his opinion. And then it lowers the cost of health care. Well, that's great. I want all those things. How? You've got to prove it to me, right? And then write how. I mean, he stated it a little bit by saying, um, Lower STIs and pregnancy and blah blah blah, poverty. Okay, so keep that in mind. <coughs> solution. Here's my problem with the solution. His solution was comprehensive sex ed, right? Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. The reason there's a problem that I have a problem with it. There was no program. There was no. This program is done in Canada. It works great. Let's use let's use this program or this program. I found this online, and it has this success rate or this study proves this on this program. He, he stated a lot, and I put repetitive on here, on um, comprehensive sex that works, abstinence only doesn't, but I'm not gonna give you any statistics on different programs of abstinence, and I'm not gonna give you any statistics on why this would work. Are you, am I wrong on that? Okay, am I yeah, missing he something? He just uses a lot of citations, and he gives all these statistics, but where are they coming from? That's what I was wondering. How legit are they? And I get it, you referenced a lot around here, but there's actually that's what I want to show me a comprehensive sex ed study that worked, that proved it lowered pregnancy rate, that it lowered abs or that it increased abstinence, that it lowered STIs, that it lowered poverty rate, that it um, whatever else he had in the conclusion, poverty rate, um, lowered the cost of health care. I I want to know all that stuff. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? I'm on board with this, but I need more. If I'm going to sign up for this, I need more evidence. Not just here's this is, here's evidence. Yeah. It worked for these people, so it won't work for us. Okay, so um, starting with overview of the problem, give me a point system or a point value. I'm not doing it. You guys got to do it. I gave you my opinion. Yeah. Not conclusion yet. We've got the solution, uh, right? Overview, so the only thing <coughs> wasn't enough of the brief history. So out of ten. Out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, background or cause of the problem? Nine because of the factors. You know, really factors. Because the nine was the problem is absence on the education, right? Yeah. But he didn't elaborate on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And not, if you guys are in agreement, I'm asking you. Okay. Effects of the problem. Who was affected? Examples, stories, repercussions. I think that was the perfect. I think that was right. Solution. Um, He definitely goes over what will work to solve the problem. He goes all over that. All states need to require sexual education to be taught about school Okay, so what will work to solve the problem? Give me your answer. What, what is it? I'm going to ask you these questions. Tell me what they are. After his presentation, after reading his paper, what will work? Funding, um, funding comprehensive sex ed, right? Yeah. Okay, what will not work? The continuance of funding for the absence of all. How does your solution solve the problem personally and globally? Personally, let's see. 
<laughs> well, personally, it affects the, the individual, you know, teenagers themselves. Um, it, it allows them to get all the information they need before they, you know, have sex and all that. And globally, it helps the economy by um, de decreasing poverty rates, potentially. Um, potentially? Yeah. So maybe that was the only part that you didn't want to go over. Okay, I'm going to tell you my thoughts on that. My thoughts are 5 out of 10. He gave us very surface information. Um, first two were very obvious, and that's what he restates throughout. But solving the problem, I need to see here is a comprehensive sex ed program that works. Here it is. This is what we should be doing in every school starting at the age of 13. This is what they learn at 13. This is what they learn at 14. Here is an abstinence-only education program that doesn't work. Here are the statistics and studies on it. He didn't have any of that. His solution was the same thing. Comprehensive, how does it solve the problem personally and globally? Comprehensive sex ed, abstinence. But that doesn't solve the problem. You're just stating another fact. So you guys get to come up, that's my opinion, you guys discuss. But we've got to kind of hurry because we've got to move on. She thinks five, I think she gave a little bit extra because I think he did. And when we asked him questions, he had a lot of good answers. Mm -hmm. He was very quick Great. to answer it. So That's I also in the presentation portion. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, so I, this is just the paper. I say it. We have to back up whatever we give them to. We can't okay. just give them random numbers. Okay. We have to explain it to them. Seven? Seven? Seven. Okay. Conclusion. What well, he restated. <laughs> Okay, so yes, thesis, yes, summarize your reasons, yes. But he introduced a lot of new information. So take that into consideration. The last one, though, for he did finish with a lot of general Okay, quick. Okay, um, I'd say nine. He did a good job of concluding, so I would only take Because like that last part, like just throwing in like other, because that is a lot of opinions too, and your conclusion should be like a wrap up of like your whole paper overall with all the facts that you presented, and it was kind of like his opinions or like inferences. Eight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can tell you right now, there was I didn't have hardly any yeah. edits or correction or APA style. You guys? Comments. That's it. That's all I had. So I go ten nine. Let's just go ten. Ten ten. Ten ten. Got it. Next, title page fine, abstract fine, reference page fine. Next, that part's easy to separate all weekend. Okay, presentation starting with the first one is five points. I say absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay, five. Delivery of the presentation. Opening got my attention. Yeah, yeah, the graph. Told me exactly what to expect. Yes, I could understand him. Summarize the main points. Yes. Um, the talk ended on a strong final idea. I vote five. <clears throat> uh, presenter brings the thesis to life. I vote five. Presentation is 50% findings from your research paper, 50% new information. I had a, like, there was so much reading in addition to like a long paper that like it wasn't that exciting to me. I thought it was pretty dull. Yeah. I thought it was, I thought his presentation was very black and white, literally and figuratively. <laughs> um, I needed some, I wanted something to jump out at me. I wanted some stories. I wanted some, and then he did stories and I was like, sweet. No new stories. It was all from the paper. Mm -hmm. So I was, this is the one I was pretty disappointed with. It might have been new information, like the graphics new information, but it was, I, I thought his new information was going to be, oh, here's a program. Here's an, so you guys keep that in mind, but. Okay, never mind, now I'm going to choose three. <laughs> Presenter always answers clearly, questions clearly and accurately. I say yeah. four. Four, just for the last one? Yep. Okay. I wanted some in-depth and there was no in-depth. You can't just write Christians and say, ready, go. <laughs> Visual. <laughs> Work is visually appealing and inviting. Yes, I can read the material. Guys, listen up, please. I could read the, the material. Was appropriate fit for the topic? Yes. Yo, so... I don't know. I'm asking you. Three for the graph. <laughs> the solution? Yes. 
Fifty percent global and, and personal. That's the four. Wow. No, you're nice. Three. Visualize information for paper as well as new information. Visual is free, mechanical errors, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. write it all down, add it up. <coughs> and then I'll do it because we've got four minutes. Hurry. No, write it all down and I'll do it. <coughs> you want to know them? So then after 10 minutes, that went a little bit longer, but I would call the presenter back in. So after we're done putting them all in. So the first page is. Did you get, did you get the first page somebody? Somebody get out a calculator. Hit me. What is it? 92, 20. Yes. Plus. And 22. What was it? 90, yes, 134. 92. So 134. Okay. Got it? 134. Okay, let it back in. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so, nope, okay, um, so as a total, I'm just going to go over it briefly, um, opening paragraph, 10 out of 10, you hooked us, we, got, we were interested, we knew what we were looking for, overview of the problem, 8 out of 10, history, couldn't find very much on history, you guys can interject whenever you want, cause of the problem, 9 out of 10, because um, we talked about, we, we saw the funding for abortion, um, government funding, uh, and then the Christian thing, but I needed more in-depth, like, a, a little bit more in-depth on the Christian version. Yeah. So 9 out of 10. 10 out of 10 on effects of the problem solution, you got 7 out of 10, um, because you set up, stated a lot, comprehensive sex ed versus abstinence only, but I wanted to see, like, here's a program that worked. Here's a program that didn't work. Okay. Here's some information on this study that worked. So you still got, I mean, you still <coughs> had a lot of facts and statistics. I just wanted a, here's a specific program that worked. Um, APA, blah, 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 10 out of 10. So overall on your paper, you got 92. Okay, pre presenting. Poised, prepared, confident, looks nice, it's very well done. Delivery of presentation, um, you had a graph, which we, that was a huge, I mean, we both were like, wow, that's impressive. Not impressive, but bad. Good, bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> opening got my attention. I knew what to expect, so you got five out of five. Brings these to life, we knew what, what you wanted. It was very apparent. 50% um, findings from your research paper, 50% new information. It was pretty similar. Okay. Pretty similar, so you got a three out of five. Again, something like here's a pro here's here's your different programs, right. or here's examples of Christian groups or conservatives or whatever. Please don't pack up while I'm talking. Presenter answers questions clearly and accurately. Four out of five to the last question. Yep. Visual. We gave you a three out of five on the visual. Um, we just I not we I described it as very black and white, literally figuratively. Um, we could read the material. It was an appropriate fit. I wanted more like here's. You had those stories in there. Put quotes in here like, Rebecca said, da da da, she got nothing out of absence only education, and now she's got AIDS. I right. whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> and okay. she died. Or like, okay. how you had the quotes in your paper, that's what stood out to me. So I wanted some more like personal testimonies in here. Or something about put pictures of the media, of like women in the media now. I mean, if anybody's ever wearing this shirt on TV, it's amazing. So put things like that in here, like the media effects. Um, Students, this is where they're hearing all the information and they're not getting education on it. So I wanted a little bit more about social and societal factors and things like that in your visual. Um, 
uh, clearly demonstrate this is a solution. Yeah, you said it. 50% global and personal. We gave you a three out of five. Again, we've already discussed that. Yep. Information from paper as well as new information for free mechanical errors. Absolutely. So overall, you got a 134 out of 150. Plus five points. So 139 out of 150. You're done. You are done. Okay, before you leave, um, please ask questions, especially what? Is it not on? It's still on. Yeah. Um, especially because if you have questions, the other class is going to have questions. So please ask me anything that is not clear. Do you see how fast that goes? Yeah. That goes really, really fast. It's really hard. You have to be totally focused the entire time. Um, you can't take time on discussing one thing for too long. If we were, I moved it right along. It helps if you kind of choose somebody to help facilitate that's going to go really quick. I don't know if you noticed that I did that, but I did. <laughs> Read the paper. You're not going to be able to put every single thing on here from the paper. So just make sure that you get at least a general summary of how you want to grade. Like I had questions or things to ask instead of being like, what did you think about? It was very direct, okay? Ask me any questions about this process. Here's what happens next. My paper, my edited paper, paper clip, this goes in here. The one on top is the final. So they all go in there, the final's on top, name right here. That way I have everybody's information, so if you refute, which you're not going to, no. yeah. um, <laughs> then I have everybody's information. Questions, comments, concerns? I hope this helps my last class as well. Off. <laughs> See you on Thursday. <laughs> Here, we got a pause. Wait, I'm so Someone I had to go through Thank you. I love my information.